Today I want to share with you my pantry organization and take you on a tour of my working pantry. Hi sweet friends! I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning how to be a modern pioneer in the kitchen, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, I have decided to work at trying to be a lot more organized and I started with my working pantry and this is going to be a series of videos where I take you through the whole Four Corners pantry organization. So today we start with the working pantry. In future videos I'll share my refrigeration organization, my freezer organization, and my extended pantry organization. Now this turned out to be a much bigger job than I ever expected. My intention was to be very organized about this and only take out one shelf's worth of things at a time, neatly place them on my kitchen island or my kitchen counters, wipe down my shelf, and then reorganize that shelf, and so on and so forth, doing this all very neatly. Well, it didn't go that way. <laughs> And I have pictures to share with you that I think those of you who have may have recently done pantry organizations after this pandemic time that we've been through, and I want to talk about that in a minute, but if you've been doing this yourself, you might be able to relate to the pictures that I'm going to share. Because I started with the intent, as I said, one shelf at a time, Next thing I knew, I was just taking stuff out willy-nilly. My kitchen island was getting overpiled <laughs> with things. My counters were piled with things. And it was an absolute disaster. And this went on for one week. I was like cooking around things, making the best of it. What a job it turned out to be. So if you are doing this also, and you're finding it to be quite a job, I stand in solidarity with you and I really felt very overwhelmed. And I didn't, I wiped down all my shelves and I was just thinking, where do I even begin to get everything into my working pantry that I need on a daily basis for the most part and at the same time keep it all very neat and organized. Because what I found, and I'd be very interested in hearing in the comments below from all of you if you experienced this, but during the pandemic, you would have thought I was home so much of the time that I would have been very organized, but it didn't work out that way. For some reason, things, I don't know, maybe because I was so busy in the home and cooking three meals a day and never really going out and bringing stuff from my extended pantry to restock my working pantry because for months we didn't leave the house. You know, in the beginning, I think so many of us were scared. We didn't know what was going on. And you would hear these terrible reports on the news. And so we were home for months and just working through the food that we had. And I was just bringing stuff in and put from my extended pantry and putting it willy-nilly in my working pantry because sometimes they were different foods that I didn't necessarily have a specific place for and so on and so forth. And it just got crazy. So, but in any event, I got everything out. I started going through everything. And one thing that I want to share, let me open the pantry now. And I'll move the camera also too. I'll just show you first to get started. And then I'll also, I'll move the camera in so you can see everything a little closer. But I just have a closet. I live in a very old home by Texas standards. I know back east I'm used to homes being like 100 and 200 years old. Uh, but in the outside, we live outside of Austin in the Texas Hill Country. And yes, you might find, you know, very old farmhouses and things like that. But for the most part, this house that we're in, it's like, I think, over 50 years old now. And that's old, you know, for like suburban living, you know, uh, for, the, for the Texas area. And so uh, we just have a closet here. I don't, nothing walk in, nothing fancy like that. So I really have to make the most, the best use of the space that I do have. Now, all of that said, <laughs> 
I also have to use this working pantry to some extent to house some of the things from my uh, extended pantry. And it actually works out really well because the top shelf, I'm short, and the top shelf, I can't, I can't reach it. I would have to get up on a stepping stool and I really don't wanna to have to do that, especially on a daily basis. Well, I got the stepping stool, I'm short, and so I can't even reach that top shelf up there if I'm not on a stepping stool, but that's why it works so perfect for housing some of my extended or prepper pantry items. And first of all, I wanna just focus on those breadcrumbs because those are really kind of my multiple streams of food, which we've talked about in the past, uh, where we have, we don't just rely on our homemade things, but we also have some store-bought backups because I've got my homemade breadcrumbs in the freezer, but I got both of those one. And again, you know, I'm not brand loyal or anything like that. Both of those were on sale at different times. And one is a panko and one is just an Italian seasoned breadcrumb. And those are basically extended or prepper pantry items to back up anything uh, that I have homemade that I might run out of. And I will take you on what, as I organize the other things, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, as I organize my freezer, as I organize my fridge, I'll show you all of that. I also have another refrigerator in my laundry room, and that's a really great place to keep a lot of my homemade things. I especially like the top shelf for ferments uh, because what do they say, heat rises and cold sinks. So I always like to try and keep my ferments on the top shelf and I'll, when I show you my refrigerator you see it's the ice maker takes up so much room there's like not a lot of top shelf room but it works great on our old refrigerator in uh, the laundry room and uh, so I'll share all of that with you and then I'll share with you my shelving because you might be saying oh Mary you know where's your like flour and more baking kind of things I keep all my grain and my flour in the five gallon buckets on a shelf. Uh, I have like a rack, a wire rack in my laundry room and we'll, we'll go through all of that, you know, as I organize that and that's gotten a little cattywampus too. <laughs> but in any event, I wanted to show you this top shelf because this, if you have a similar situation where you have a pantry that may have a high shelf that you can't reach, it can work well if you have limited space uh, for your extended pantry. I have uh, kind of limited space uh, for my extended pantry. It's just, it's, it's a, a, a kind of shared space in a closet, but it's got to share space with other things. <laughs> so this works out great. And up here I've got rolled oats and then behind that I have oat groats. And then I've got sprouted lentils in the front and in the back I have, and sprouted lentils are so easy to make. You soak them, they sprout and then you dry them. And then behind that, I have some French lentils that I like very much. And those that's what I have a small jar of right there in the front, because then it kind of triggers my memory that, oh, okay, there's more French lentils back there. They're just the little, little dark lentils. They're very, very tasty. And then I've got some pearled barley, and there's some uh, uh, unpearled barley behind that. I've got buckwheat, and then uh, in, in this kind of, has like a little it's like a little l shape it kind of goes back a little i just keep some herbs back there in jars for making home remedies and and whatnot now i'm going to get off this stepping stool and we'll go over all the other shelves but i want to mention something and i'd be interested in hearing from you if you've experienced this uh, when you've gone through an organization process uh, if you have ever experienced decision fatigue I was watching a video, and I think a lot of you probably know this gal. Her name is Becky, and she has the YouTube channel called Acre Homestead. She's a very sweet lady, and she and her husband recently uh, bought a new home, and they moved, and she was unpacking in, and filming her unpacking in her kitchen and putting her things away, and she said that she had reached a point where she was experiencing decision fatigue. 
and oh my gosh, I could, the minute she said that, and I was in the, like watching the video while I'm doing this job, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's like a light bulb moment for me. Because I was really reaching decision fatigue, where to put what, the top shelf, you know, was easy, uh, because as you see the before and after pictures, for the most part, I had those jars up there. The only thing I had in this uh, left-hand corner was a little Lazy Susan with some kind of backup baking items, you know, kind of, you know, extended or prepper pantry baking items that were just kind of backups that I had up there as well. But I took those down because that it's they're small and, and I, I should just keep decided I should just keep those somewhere else. But once I started working down through these other shelves, I was really experiencing that decision fatigue. Where to put this, where to put that, you know? And I have to say, you know, this is not, I'm not one to like, some people, their pantries look fabulous. You know, they have everything in glass jars and they've got the label maker. I tend to keep everything in its original packing and and just make do best I can. So uh, I'm not really, pinch. what do they say, Pinterest perfect? But I'm hoping that this will help some of you uh, you know, as you're going through this process, because when I mentioned this on the community page on YouTube, many of you had said that you were trying to do the same thing too, especially, you know, before we go into the fall and the winter months, just kind of do uh, an organization, an inventory, what do we have, what do we need, you know, so on and so forth. And I want to mention, I'll definitely put a link to this in the description below. I have, and there's no email required, you can print this out, download it to your phone, whatever you want. It's very easy to do and share it as much as you want with friends and family and whatnot. It's an inventory checklist and it's a four corners pantry inventory checklist. And it's like four pages for each of the corners for the working pantry, the fridge, the freezer, and the prepper pantry. And it just goes through where you can list, you know, I have it all like cat broken down into categories. You can list what you have, how much, what you need, all of that. And hopefully that'll help uh, too, because I find that going through an organization like this, at the same time, I'm doing an inventory. So it's nice to kind of, you know, do two jobs at once. And one other thing I want to mention, if you're new, and even if you're not new to this traditional foods journey, uh, regardless of maybe where you are on your journey, I just want to mention, I'll also put a link in the description, over on my website, Mary's Nest, same name as my YouTube channel, I have a 36 page, and it's a lot, you know, to print out, you could download it to your phone, but I have a, a 36 page four corners pantry list. It's kind of what I call, I think the essential traditional foods uh, pantry list. And it lists all the, all the things you may want to think about stocking in a traditional foods kitchen. And then I have a lot of links that show you how to make a lot of the stuff homemade or how to use uh, what you stock to make meals. And there's a lot of links to videos and, and blog posts and all of that. Uh, so I'll definitely link to that below as well. Alrighty, let me get down from this stepping stool and I'll go over how I made decisions with my other, other things in my pantry. Now I want to talk about this top, this like second shelf here. This is what I can more or less reach. And you can tell my heritage, this is kind of my Italian shelf. But before we go over that, I just want to talk about what I've got here in the door. And this, yes, this is duct taped here. <laughs> it's like coming out a little, but this is kind of sentimental. Uh, this is something my father put up. And so I just don't have the heart to replace it, you know, with him having passed. That it's just kind of kind of sweet to think about him putting up this shelf. So I just kind of duct tape it and try to hold it together. But I just want to mention kind of what I keep here in the door on these shelves and something. And now I think the shelves, these like door shelves they make today, they can like hang over and 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 do a lot of good things like that. Our doors are lar are are tall, so the only drawback is if you ha do have tall doors. The hangover ones, and depending on how tall you are, uh, they, it might be difficult to reach the very top. 
of, of the rack, but those are nice, the ones that hang over the door. And if you have a small uh, closet type pantry like I do, these can come in very handy. But basically what I keep here, and a lot of with my working pantry, are a lot of the things that are in that multiple streams of food line, so to speak. It's where I keep a lot of the things we buy at the grocery store that in many ways are backups. Like I'll go to my back refrigerator and I'll get various things that I need that I've made to use uh, to make meals or whatever, whatever we're eating. But I really like my working pantry to have a lot of, you know, it's like cereals and snack foods and things like this, because it makes it very easy for my husband, as well as my son, when he's home with us, uh, to kind of access some of the foods that they enjoy. And, uh, but my husband's just been really great about transitioning to nutritious things. And most of these are things, how he'll determine kind of what he's picking out at the grocery store is based on what our store has a coupon for. Like these cereals, there's no added sugar. So I really like that. Now in here is just some extra saltines and here we've got the uh, regular saltines. And uh, these, I always like to keep saltines on hand. Saltines are, they're really kind of, you know, more or less limited ingredients, uh, but they're also really helpful if someone's not feeling well, or there's a little upset stomach, or whatever the case may be, I always like to have saltines on hand. And then this is <laughs> this is actually empty, but these were some little butter cookies. They were made with butter, which was nice, at our grocery store, and they were free if we bought something else. I don't remember what it was, but I always, which I'll talk more about when we get down here, I always, uh, to one of the lower shelves on the door, I always like to um, save these tins. And my husband's decaf iced tea, he really enjoys that. And then these were on sale and they have very, Central Market is the line uh, at HEB. It's their store, one of their store brands that has very nice ingredients. You know, it's kind of like whole food-ish, you know, like the store. Uh, and these are ra rosemary currant crisps and they're very limited ingredients, and so that was nice. These were on uh, sale, and they're just pineapple chips and coconut chips and, and some things like this. If you know Bucky's, whenever we take a road trip <laughs> and we pass a Bucky's, you know, we'll pick up some things, so we've got a few extras of those. But that's basically it. I'm not sure, we may have to move the camera uh, so that you can see the lower part of the door. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about that. Uh, but now let's move to this shelf and how I made some of the decisions as to what I was going to, uh, how I was gonna arrange everything. I'm gonna try not to put my back to you, uh, but as I said, I keep a lot of Italian things up here. I've got all of my pastas. I couldn't find any containers. I'll talk about the containers in a minute. You know, when our dads passed away, we combined three households. So we had all the containers I had, all the containers my mom had, all the containers my mother-in-law had. So I did have a, a good sampling of things uh, to store food in, but I didn't have anything that kept, uh, that was long enough to hold the spaghetti. And I guess I could put it in one of these, you know, upright, but I was looking for something that might have like those little snap locks and keep it a little fresher. Uh, any extra pasta I have, I tend to store in 10, uh, not 10 gallon, the five gallon food safe buckets. But I've got quite a bit here. Uh, the thin spaghetti, angel hair, a little bit of linguine. And so for now, it's just gonna live there because I didn't have any container for it. I've just got some other pastas. I've got some ditalini behind. I've got my tomato powder on top of the ditalini that's right here. Uh, this, I have a video where I show you how to make this very easy to dehydrate. You don't even need anything special. You can dry this right in your own oven and then just grind it up. It's wonderful. You can use it to make a tomato soup. You can uh, sprinkle it if you make homemade focaccia. Uh, it's a wonderful topping. And then I've just got some ditalini here. This is wonderful in soup. It's a tiny little pasta. I've got some tomato puree over there. What I did 
was I tried to kind of keep like with like. So I've got couscous and then uh, I've got um, the capers, I've got the pesto, some dried tomatoes, sun-dried tomatoes, a little bit of that. Is it Fido or Fidio? I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, but it's that wonderful pasta. If you so, and it's semolina, you know, I go on a lot about that it being 100% Durham semolina. And it's, uh, they sell it at Aldi's. And if you saw the last haul I did where I tried to find all the foods for under a dollar at Aldi's, and they had a good selection of things. That's seven ounces, and it's only 28 cents. And it's wonderful for making a homemade rice aroni. I have a video where I show you how to do that. It's great for putting into soups. I know so many of you shared with me that your moms used that when you were growing up. Uh, so that was a lot of fun to, to read. But then underneath that, I put my diced tomatoes, my tomato paste, and then I've got in here, what I did was I just put, uh, now I have more of this in my extended pantry, but I just put a variety of the lighter color beans that I use because I tend to use those more than the darker colored beans. And these are just canned. Now, I do have over there, <laughs> you know, talking about the decision fatigue, uh, I think I'm just going to consolidate all of my dry beans in five gallon buckets and store them somewhere else because they just take up a lot of room in a working pantry and the different bags and I'm, I just want to organize like have all my uh, lentils together all my black beans together all my kidney beans and it'll just be you know and I also have these in dried versions too but I love the convenience of the canned beans so I put these right here in the working pantry because this way if I'm short on time or I forgot to soak beans or I just want to do something really quick and easy it's so nice having these. And I've got the garbanzo. These, you can make a fantastic hummus with this. And I, I show you how to make this with the little Lebanese topping. Uh, my uncle was Lebanese and he, uh, oh my gosh, he made such good hummus. And he, he had this little topping uh, that he made with, um, oh, pistachios, I think it's in it. I have the video where I, where I make it and I think that uh, you'll, you'll really enjoy that. But I can whip up a quick hummus. I've got navy beans. I've got Great Northern and behind it I've got some cannellini. I love the white beans because they just work so well uh, because I really like to make beans and green soup and I, I share that recipe with you. I'll link to that in the description below. You can literally make this for pennies yet it's so nutritious because you have greens, you have beans, and then use your bone broth. I use, usually use chicken bone broth and it makes a very nutritious soup. My family loves it. And so that's something that's so easy because you can just take those beans right out of the can and or if you have your home canned beans, even better, and get some, sorry, get some uh, greens out of your, and tr traditionally it's made with escarole, but I've made it with all different, I've even made it with, um, oh my gosh, pretty much any lettuce that I have on hand that maybe is in my crisper and, you know, it really looks like I should be using it. Uh, maybe it's a little wilted, but it doesn't matter for soup. And I chop that up, my family loves it. And then over here, let me just pull this down. What I did was I put all of my <laughs> all of my clam juice in the bottle, uh, and underneath that I have the clams in the other container. So when I want to make, um, I'm just put this down on the counter. I don't think you can see it down here, but when I want to make a clam chowder, I've got all my clam juice together. This was like all over my pantry, and I've got my cans of clams and I'm all set. And then what I like to do is, I like to make a homemade mayonnaise with um, olive oil, uh, but it really is nice to have a backup in the pantry because this way, if I don't have any homemade mayonnaise made, uh, or maybe I'm not at home and Ted and Ben, maybe Ben's visiting us and they wanna whip up a, chicken salad or a tuna salad, they've got it handy. 
And this one is the Sir Kensington's and this is the organic mayonnaise. And the reason that, you know, I'm willing to like go with this one is because they use a uh, organic sunflower oil. So that's good. You know, it's not uh, so many of the mayonnaises today and I got these on sale. That's why I have a lot of them. Uh, so many uh, of the mayonnaise today are made with soybean oil. So I'm not crazy about that. But so these worked well. I, these I've had and these work well because I can just, you know, pick them up and carry them over to the stove or I can put them down on the counter and just take out what I need. Now I've moved the camera and hopefully you can kind of get a feel for uh, the fact of this sort of L that I was talking about in my pantry. And this, I will share with you the, pic the before pictures. It was just like a black hole. <laughs> I mean, I just had so much stuff pushed back here. I had all kinds of tea. I don't even know. I think I had a thermos up here. But what I've got up here on the top shelf in the back there is where I keep most of my fortified wines. And if you've seen my bone broth videos, you know that I talk a lot about using fortified wines. I don't drink uh, per se. I guess this is some of the bone broth, but I think most of the alcohol cooks off. But I like to acidulate the water to acidify it uh, with some type of fortified wine uh, like port, like vermouth, like marsala, madeira, whatever the case may be. It imparts a nicer flavor, I think, than uh, using some type of vinegar or uh, lemon juice. And it's really kind of what, you know, the French have always done, uh, you know, if you read the Julia Child cookbooks, I think she always used white vermouth whenever she'd be making a stock or a broth. Uh, and the reason that we're acidulating the water, and I'll link to all the bone broth videos. If you've been with me a while, you've probably seen them, but uh, if you're new, welcome. <laughs> uh, I have a lot of that, you know, where I'm always acidulating the water. And the reason is that I like to soak the bones for about an hour before I turn the heat on because uh, the acid that you're using in fortified wines or, or wines, whatever you want to use, since I don't drink, I don't, you know, if I opened a bottle of wine to just use a cup, what happens over time, it's going to turn into vinegar because it's been exposed to the acetobacter uh, bacteria in the air. And so the fortified wines uh, are made in such a way with some sugar and whatnot, and they don't, they just have a screw top and they don't, uh, they don't turn into vinegar. So they're very useful for people who want to use some type of wine product for cooking or, you know, for making bone broth without having to worry about them turning into vinegar. But in any event, the reason that we acidulate the water is to extract as much collagen as possible from the bones. So that one hour soak before you make bone broth gives a kind of a jump start. So that's why I like to do that. So I just kind of have those tucked in the back and then I'll just get, I can't really reach it, but you know, I'll just get on the stepping stool when I need it. And I just keep some gum in the front uh, which is really nice, you know, when anybody, you know, kind of like the way I keep the saltines. I also like to keep some gum on hand. You know, sometimes if a person feels a little nauseous or something, the gum can help. And I have a couple of different varieties there. And then I have these metal uh, kind of pull-out shelves. I've had these for ages and they work really well. I've been very happy with them. Sorry, I'm looking away from the camera. <laughs> I don't want that to fall on my head. But I just, you know, again, the decision fatigue set in with this. I kind of just put everything in here together. I've got extra, some extra cinnamon powder. I've got cinnamon sticks, a variety of cinnamon sticks. I've got mulling spices. I've got like a little cinnamon sugar grinder. And what is this? Oh yeah, the, uh, what do they call those? The star anise. And I've got some mulling, mulling spices in here too. And then these are, uh, which I learned from many of you, I thought these were like just regular tea bags, but they're actually 
for using in a way like you would use mulling spices. So I kept them together. They're really tasty too. So that's nice. But this is great because this is kind of what I'll be using now as we go more into the fall. So that's very accessible up there. And then down here, I have just kind of a variety of different things, some teas. I've got the nighty night. We love that. Uh, this is great. This brand, I'm not sure how to, tea, tea cane? I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. This is wonderful tea. And then I've got some plan, extra plantain because I keep some on a lower shelf. Uh, this is very good uh, for digestion. And this is just some, someone sent me this lovely gift when I, after I helped them with so a, a particular project they had and it's got some, I haven't tried it yet, I think it's going to be delicious. This is the ginger juice. It's the powdered ginger that I got at Trader Joe's if you saw that haul. This is going to be very nice I think. And then this is the, um, I like having this. Uh, this is the, uh, the homemade electrolyte powder. Uh, and this is great because, you know, this just really is never going to go bad. And you just put a tiny bit in water and you don't need to buy like Gatorade and things like that, which are expensive and also have like a lot of artificial food coloring and things. And I have a video where I show you how to make this and I'll be sure to link to that because I know a lot of people have asked me about this and it's very easy to make. It's wonderful. Then when we come down to this lower shelf, this is where I have another one of these pull out things. And this works great if you have a pantry like this with an L like a little, as I call it, the black hole. Uh, these kind of things work great. And I really like them better. I've seen some of those plastic ones that pull out, but I've never found those like to pull smoothly. And I just keep a big variety of teas here. So this is nice. We really enjoy tea drinking in the fall. And so I have a wide variety. I keep them right there. And then I just have more tea here. I have my constant comment, which I love. And I have a, like a lot of little holders where I put uh, tea that we've taken out of the box that we're, you know, drinking right at this particular moment. And so that works out well. And they just, they slide so beautifully. Then I'm not sure how deep you can see in here. I have, of course, a little thing filled with chocolates. <laughs> Gotta have that. And then just a few little bottle openers. These are really more, I, I know it's kind of funny. I'm like decorating in my pantry. I don't really use these, but I just think this is so precious. And this one belonged to my mother and father. This is real old. It's cute. So I like having those there. And then, I don't know if you can see in the back. I've got some extra honey there. My husband's cousin raises bees and uh, he's given us some honey a couple of times. And so I've got some honey there. I also have some honey over here we'll talk about in a minute. But what I love is now I can sew, you'll see from the old pictures, I could barely get my bread baskets out before. So now this is so nice. And then I also have back here just a plastic container that has some, this is just stevia. I don't use it a lot. Uh, it's the green powdered stevia, which is kind of supposed to be the healthier one. But I just have it tucked back there because I don't really use too much stevia. But it's nice to have, um, especially like if you're doing some kind of smoothie, those, if you've ever seen those books, uh, the Trim Healthy Mama, I, I'm like a dropout. I, I couldn't, I couldn't stick with it, all the different types of food combinations. But they have some nice drinks in their, in their cookbook. And some of them call for, they don't use stevia, they use something else, but it's something they sell. Uh, but sometimes I'll just use the Body Ecology, I don't know if you know this brand, uh, of the liquid stevia, and this works very well, you know, if you want to just really limit your sugar intake. Well, let's move on to the rest of the shelves. Now on this shelf, what I did was I have one of those sort of graduated, you can see them as graduated metal shelves. And I really like just keeping all of this very easy to access. And I have all of my vinegars and my olive oils. I used to have some coconut oil here too, but I found that really, I don't use a lot of coconut oil. Uh, I, I sometimes will include it in a particular baked good. But most of the time, 
I'm using butter when I'm baking. Uh, so I put my coconut oil in the back, which we'll talk about another day. But I've got all my olive oil and I like to keep this. I've got my homemade fruit scrap vinegar in the back, which I'll share with you when we, when we do that uh, tour and organization. But um, I'd like to keep some store-bought apple cider vinegar on hand because this is what I use if I'm not gonna use some type of fortified wine to acidulate my bone broth, then I'll use a quarter cup of the store-bought apple cider vinegar. And I prefer to use the store-bought than my own homemade one because I like to save my homemade one uh, for salad dressings and for um, you know, like little home remedies, whatever I might be doing. Uh, because I just feel that that's really rich in probiotics. Now, they say this is raw and it has the mother and that's all great, but I just feel what's homemade is better and so I don't want to just go ahead and cook that in my bone broth. Uh, so I do keep that handy and sometimes I'll use this, you know, if a recipe, you know, calls for vinegar and we're going to be cooking it and whatnot. Uh, so I always like to have uh, at least one bottle of that on hand. You know, again, the multiple streams of food. And then here I've got more honey. This is uh, from my husband's cousin. This is a nice pourable liquid honey. So I like to keep that handy too. It works very well. You know, again, in any type of recipe that's requiring a pourable honey, it also works really well when making salad dressings and all of that. So this is all nice and handy. I have my different vinegars. I've got this, uh, this one's not open yet, but uh, this is terrific. This is the Umplum vinegar. If you've not tried this, I highly recommend it. <laughs> it's very good. And then I've got the soy sauce. I, this is fermented soy sauce, and I keep a bunch. We go through a lot of soy sauce. I keep a bunch of this also in, in back in my laundry room. And that is very nice. This little... Uh, Horror is very nice Whoops, to keep it on hand. I've got some balsamic vinegar. Again, you can see my Italian area. Now around this corner, I don't think you can see too deeply in here. I do keep some empty uh, salad dressing type things. I think these came with, uh, oh, I can't remember, Good Seasonings or something like that is the brand name. But these you can always find at the thrift store. They always have a lot of these. So I keep a couple of these right here in my pantry for when I'm making my homemade salad dressings. And I have a video where I show you how to make a whole bunch of homemade salad dressings. And I will definitely link to that in the description below. And then I also keep this, the Bragg's uh, vinaigrette on hand, Ted and Ben like this. And so this kind of comes in handy. How we, I don't know how we started using this. I think, you know, I had COVID at the end of December, 2021. It was like I managed to, avoided for so long and then eventually got it. And I think when I was under the weather, Ted was like getting some uh, pre-made salads and he uh, started, he knows me <laughs> and he knows that I would say, oh, get something good, you know, that's not made with soybean oil. And this is terrific because this is made uh, with extra virgin olive oil. So I definitely approved, <laughs> but they really liked that. And so got a couple of bottles of that and I just keep you know like like I said some of this really does serve as my extended pantry my prepper pantry in certain places because as we eventually tour everything <laughs> that I'll share with you you'll see that I kind of have to keep things in different places. I try to keep it organized and like with like, but I do need to keep things in different places. So sometimes, you know, if I have like a seafood cocktail sauce and a sweet relish, you know, for a backup, I just keep these in here. And I've got some uh, in the back here. I've got, you know, if I don't have homemade ketchup, then I've got this organic ketchup. And again, don't worry, because I know some of you have said when you see my videos, oh, Mary, you have so much organic stuff. Why do you, you know, why are you always pushing organic? And I'm really not, you know, I'm never going to be the one to tell you you have to buy everything organic. Uh, but HEB, the grocery store that we have here in Central Texas, and I know, uh, and in other parts, Texas may be up in Oklahoma. I know they have them in Mexico. 
Uh, they're wonderful grocery stores, and they really uh, are on a mission to uh, sell a lot of things that are organic or natural. I know that word doesn't mean a lot, but they do have products where they show like limited ingredients and like real food ingredients, not necessarily organic, but not a lot of chemicals. And they're really on a mission to sell this and at an affordable price which is really nice. So that's why I'll often just buy the store brand because it will be less expensive, organic or not, than uh, the brand names. Oh, and I just want to mention, none of this is sponsored. Everything that I have in here is things that I buy and that I use and that I like. And so I just share it with you, but none of it's sponsored. So that's pretty much it. I'm sorry, it's because it's such a tight squeeze in here. I don't mean to be putting my back to you. Uh, but that is, now you might say, wow, you know, this is kind of valuable real estate, so to speak, in your pantry. And you just kind of have it spread out uh, with these, you know, olive oils and vinegars. But I have to tell you, this, we'll talk about the lower shelf in a sec, but this is really what I am like going to constantly. Because I said in a lot of ways, this, my working pantry is also kind of, you know, as I said, you know, a lot, a lot of things that relate to my extended or backup pantry, my multiple streams of food, so on and so forth. But what I'm going to every single day that I'm grabbing is going to be my olive oils in the, you know, and I, as I've got the, um, the balsamic and I've got some balsamic vinegar back here. That's a lot of the things that I'm going to be picking uh, in and out, in and out, in and out because I'm gonna rely on fresh fruits and vegetables in my fridge, maybe frozen meats, fish, and chicken in my freezers, and the, the, the condiments, so to speak, that I'm gonna be accessing regularly are gonna be my olive oil and my vinegars. So that's why you'll see from the old pictures, it's a lot messier. This is a lot neater and more. I, th I, I hope it's a lot neater. It's not, in many ways, it's not a lot different because this, I would almost say a lot of this and maybe the next shelf, which we'll talk about in a sec, this is kind of really my working pantry where a lot of the rest of the stuff is a little bit more extended pantry, but I hope I, I hope that helps some of you uh, feel better about all of this as you go through this process, that it's okay to have maybe a lot of extended pantry. It's okay to kind of have everything combined where you have a lot of extended or prepper pantry items along with your working pantry items. So, you know, you just gotta be flexible and you gotta be kind of clever and think, okay, well, what space? Uh, do I have and what's the best way to store things? Uh, so, well, let's move on to the next shelf. Now, it's really these two shelves, this one we're going to talk about now and the one we just talked about with the olive oil and vinegar. I would say that that's really the bulk of my working pantry. So, as you can see, I do use a lot of the other shelves for a lot of storage. Uh, so that's something to think about. Even if you just have like a cabinet, you can say, okay, what am I going to really give my prime real estate to, uh, to really focus on those things that I truly think are working pantry items. And that's what I did. And that's kind of like when I was having that decision fatigue, because I'm like, okay, what do I really access almost every day? And I think a lot of you may know my friend Denise over at the channel This and That with Denise. She does all things homemaking, as she says, traditional homemaking for the modern woman. It's very cute. But she has a lot of videos, you know, where she's organizing her pantry. And she has kind of a long pantry. And she has given me some wonderful ideas to how to really focus on the working pantry items. Because Denise is very good at organizing her pantry with those working pantry items clearly in mind, clearly available and easily accessible. And my other friend, Robin, who you probably know as well, who has the YouTube channel Faith and Flower, flower as in, you know, bread flower, uh, she is really terrific at organizing. 
and 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 if you like you know min minimalism she's a has a really great channel to watch but i've gotten so many good ideas from her and really the concept of putting things you know in a bin that doesn't have a top but that you can get to easily and get out either what you need or take the bin you know to where you're going to be cooking uh, is is something I really saw her doing. She has a lovely, those shelves that you pull out and, and she went through a move to a smaller home uh, where her and her husband downsized into. And her pantry is really, in many ways, not a lot different than mine. It's more like a, clo a closet now. And she, but she has pull out shelves, which are wonderful. But she collected things like the bins or baskets, I, I can't remember exactly, but it's such a good idea because she just groups a lot of like with like, and then she can just pull it out and she knows exactly what she's got and what she needs. And so uh, I have to thank her for get, giving me that, that idea. So for example, what I've got here is we really like to eat oatmeal. And now I can just bring this over to my stove. I've got my steel cut oats in here. I've got some extra in here that can refill this. I just refill it, I save the can. And then I've got some additional oat bran in here that I like to use. And so that's good. Everything before it was just, oh, okay, where is that? And where is that? You know, now, boom, I've got everything I need. It's right here. And I give it prime real estate because I use it almost every day. And then this one that I keep right next to it has oat bran so I can refill uh, that glass jar that I have oat bran in. This has buckwheat, I've got some uh, rye flakes, I've got some cracked spelt, and then I've got some wheat bran. And these are all things that periodically I will add to our oatmeal, just like a quarter of a cup, but just to change up the nutritional profile of whatever we're eating, since we do eat oatmeal on a very regular basis, I like to change it up. And that way, I've just, they're right next to each other. It's beautiful. And I don't have to worry about hunting and pecking for all these different things. I can just pull them out. Okay, I want to add a few rye flakes or, or some crack spelt, whatever the case may be. Or sometimes just make those instead of the oat groats, you know, the, the steel cut oats. So this, I love this. This made me very happy. And then next to that, these now down here on the one that the, this, this is honey. And then I have additional honey in this uh, covered case. However, what I put down here are the honeys that I use less frequently. And these honeys I tend to use on a very regular basis. Might drizzle some on the oatmeal, may take a little uh, in the evening. You know, it's very soothing honey to the digestive tract. And I, I've got a Texas honey. Let me show you this. I've got, this is a wonderful Texas honey. And then I also have the Manuka honey because this is very good if you, if you just feeling a little under the weather or you just want to, you know, give your immune system a boost, uh, this is supposed to be very good for you. So I, you know, especially I put this in here, uh, especially as we start going into the fall and winter, because I'll want that very handy. Uh, and then over here, I just have some prebiotic, not the probiotic, but the prebiotic, the, the uh, good, what are the good foods, so to speak, that feed the probiotics so and I keep these handy because what I like to do is you can just mix these right into salad dressings uh, or into a little bit of yogurt I mean anything that you want and so I keep those handy because I try to incorporate uh, prebiotics into our diet to make sure that we're giving our good gut bacteria our probiotics what they need to eat I'll move the camera in a bit so you can see what I've got around the L. Uh, but before we do that, I just wanted to uh, finish off some of these. What I've got down here are uh, some uh, store-bought uh, jams. And I've got some unusual ones that are not things that I can readily find to make homemade. 
because these are lingonberries. This is very good. And then uh, wild blueberries, which I'm not able to uh, find. And so, and there are some other preserves that I have in there. And that's handy for when uh, sometimes on Sundays, or no, it's usually Saturday morning, we'll do like eggs and bacon and toast, some nice sourdough toast. And it's kind of a treat to have a jam. And then I'll put it in the refrigerator. But I, so I just have a little selection there. And then over here, I've got some peanut butter. And also in here, I keep some coconut cream and coconut milk. Because unlike the uh, coconut oil, uh, I do like to have the coconut cream and the coconut milk handy. Uh, those can be fun to add to smoothies. Now I was hoping to try to shoot the camera back here, but what I'll do is I'll overlay some pictures because it's kind of hard between <laughs> with, to try to see this and it's kind of dark back there. But basically what I've done is, well first let me show you this. This again, like I showed you with the teas, I've got another one of these racks that I just pull out and I've got all my spices there. And then the same with the one on the bottom. I've just got, you know, more spices. And I find this very convenient because I can pull this out. I can see everything. And this is where this, both of these lived here before, but there were also just a lot of stuff thrown in with them. And then I have again, like a lot of little knick-knacky kind of things that I like with toothpicks and stuff. <laughs> But what I have back here are two glass jars that I have filled one with ginger and the other with cinnamon. I use a lot of ginger and a lot of cinnamon, uh, both, and especially now that we're going to the fall and the winter, this is my cinnamon, a lot with baking and also with making like different kind of, you know, hot healing beverages. Uh, powdered ginger, powdered cinnamon, they just work really great. And then I've just got another uh, little bin back there. I'll take a picture and overlay it. It's just got my de uh, more spices uh, that I've kind of like just kind of stored away there that are related, you know, to cinnamon and ginger, some baking spices, things like that. Now we'll go and look at the two lower shelves and I have a very funny picture to show you of what my lowest shelf looked like, but I have to ask uh, your <laughs> indulgence uh, for me, and it, and it comes with a caveat why it looks so bad, uh, which I'll explain. I'm just sitting on a little stool here so I can show you these lower levels, but I really need to tell you about what went on on this very lower level, the one that's on the floor. A couple of things. Number one, this is why it's so important to clean out and organize your pantry. When I got into this lower level, I and this is another reason why I love having these bins to help kind of corral things, that I used to just have things, let me move this for a minute, but I used to just have things open, just like sitting out on that shelf. And what did I have there? Like molasses, this is some sweeteners I have in there, molasses. I've got the coconut syrup, I've got date sugar in the back, there's also date syrup. Well, but they were all just sitting there, they weren't corralled in a plastic container. But boy did I learn my lesson. When I took everything out, and I'll show you the picture in a minute of what this looked like, what did I find but one of my jars of molasses had fallen down onto the floor. And it must have been just enough to slightly loosen the cap. And so over time, the molasses, obviously very, very slowly, and it must have been a very, because when I picked up the bottle, it seemed it wasn't cracked or anything, and the cap seemed not tight, but it was on, had leaked out. So I had this sticky, nasty mess. And it had, and it, I guess it had leaked so slowly and then the air, you know, allowed it to harden. Oh, I had to get in there with a toothbrush and a scrub brush and oh my gosh, and, and this is why it wound up taking me a week. It was always some finding some adventure that I had to tend to. But uh, in any event, that's another reason why I think if you've got some of these bins around the house and you can use these to corral things, it makes life 
a, like a little cleaner and neater in the event that something does crack or leak. And it's kind of like with ferments. I always tell you, put them in a jar so if they bubble over, you won't have a mess on your hands. I should have taken my own advice in the pantry and not put sort of wobbly things on a wobbly shelf. But in any event, okay, I'm going to show you a picture of the lower part of this pantry. And please don't <laughs> Please <laughs> try to have patience with me on it when you see it. Everything's like thrown in there. And what happened was uh, we got our dog, Indy, who I've talked with you about and shared pictures of, but Indy is a love. But when we got Indy, he was, he was about 10 weeks old. And I saw a little... Thing. I think I've shared this with you. I saw a little thing on, um, on the internet and it showed this cute little puppy and it had a sign over his head that said, must go now with an exclamation point. And it was a rancher up in Fort Worth who uh, didn't want him. And I felt so sorry. He was so cute. And either he didn't, I don't know what they do, you know, if they give him a puppy test and he didn't pass it to be a ranch dog or a hunting dog, I don't know what. He's just a big lovable baby, he's like a little, real, like a little stocky, you know. Uh, he's a big dog, but he's, he's on the stocky side. And uh, so he's just very cute. But in any event, when I would go to get things out of my extended pantry, and bring them into my working pantry, I would just have to dash in and out of the kitchen because we had a doggy gate up and I would just be carrying them like this. And, you know, he grew fast and he's, you know, his paws can touch my shoulders, you know, if he, if, when he jumps up. And he was so cute because he would see me bringing all these things in and I would just have to like quickly get it into the pantry and close the door. And then I don't know, it just, I, I, I think it grew <laughs> and it just seemed to blossom. And I just, th whatever I had put in there, then I just left in there and I never got around to putting it in its right place and organizing things. And every time I'd open the pantry, I'd be like, oh, I got to organize that. I brought that from the extended pantry. But now what I've got is I've got my napkins. I like cloth napkins. I also do keep some paper napkins on hand. And I've got some of those. I like to keep like a paper, it's like a bowl uh, slash plate. And I like those because they make a good, uh, it's a good combination of a bowl and a plate without having to buy both. And if anybody, you know, gets sick or whatever, and I don't feel like, you know, washing and sanitizing dishes, maybe if I'm under the weather myself, thank God, it's very rare. But uh, if I am taking care of anybody, I've got some paper napkins and some paper, uh, you know, those little bowls. And so I just tuck those behind there because it's going to be very infrequent. And but on top, you know, I've got my molasses and uh, the coconut syrup, different sweeteners that I like to have handy. And then next to that, I've got my canning supplies. I've got now all my jars and rings I keep in the, um, I keep those in the garage. And then my lids I keep because it just gets too hot in the garage. I keep in my laundry room, but uh, the, all the new lids. But over in, in there, I've got the lemon juice, the bottled lemon juice. Once I open that, then, but I'm all ready for canning season. Uh, I'll put that in my fridge. And I've got a glass jar of white vinegar, which I, it takes forever to, to use that up. It's just for cleaning um, the rim of the jar before I put the lid on. And so I just keep that all together. And then I recently saw this pectin. I like the... Pe is a Pomona pectin, but I didn't see that when I was at the grocery store, but I saw this new pecti fruits. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it. Uh, and it's not as simple as Pomona, uh, but it is basically just some pectin and a little bit of sugar. And so I thought that was interesting. I'll, I'll definitely give that a try. And then next to that, I just have some uh, muffin tin liners and a little uh, 
tin in the back that shows the animal crackers that holds more muffin tin liners. And then on top of that, this was decision fatigue. There's just sitting on top of it is a bag of chocolate chips because I didn't know where the heck to put them. <laughs> So maybe if I bake more or something using chocolate chips, I'll find a place, uh, a little better place. But that was definitely a decision fatigue move. And I said, well, okay, let me, let me let it live there for now. Now, you might be wondering, why do I have this empty basket here? And I sit it on top of these bins, which I'll explain in a minute what's in there. But this is going to be my new catch-all so that I don't, so if I'm rushing for some reason to the pantry, to the working pantry, and I have to just quickly drop something in there, it's gonna go in here and it's gonna be put away and organized before I forget about it or it gets out of control. And I like there was, uh, Becky at Ega Homestead was talking, and I thought this was so cute. She was talking about some other uh, YouTube channel. I'm not familiar with it, but uh, she was saying that uh, uh, that things have boundaries. And it really made me laugh because it's like, okay, if it's more than what can fit in here, then it has to go somewhere else because this is going to be the boundaries of how much I can dump in the pantry before I have a chance to put it away. But I thought this was so clever. So this is my boundaries uh, for holding whatever I bring home that needs to be somehow sorted. So what I've got down at the very bottom there, you know, around the corner, I don't know how much you can see, again, the L, uh, I've got trash bags, aluminum foil, I've got some more bread baskets, and that's pretty much it. I just have the trash bags sitting on a, a little stool so they're not on the ground. And, and you know, it just, it, it becomes such a dark black hole back there. I really, I really don't put much back there. But in here, what I do is I keep a pound, I like to keep one pound of coffee, regular ca caffeinated coffee, ground, and one pound of decaf ground. And again, this is all in the line of thinking of multiple streams of food, because I like to buy the beans, the whole beans, they store better and last longer, and then I grind them myself, and then we're all set. And chances of running out of coffee beans is less likely. However, chances of running out of time to make sure that I've always, I'm, I've always got the beans ground is more likely. And so if for any reason, uh, I keep two jars next to the coffee pots. Yes, we have two. So many of you have asked me why I have two coffee pots. And I have to tell you this, it's actually, it's genius, I think. And it's something I, maybe my mother mentioned it to me because I know she and my dad had two coffee pots. And because I think there was a time when he turned to decaf. My husband takes decaf coffee. I take caffeinated coffee. And for a long time, we would just have the one coffee pot and we would, I would just drink decaf with my husband. But I often say, I'm just a better person on caffeinated coffee. <laughs> but I just really like my, I don't drink a lot. I have two cups in the morning and that's it. And I really, maybe if we're out and about, you know, if we have to go somewhere for an early appointment or something and we go out to breakfast, you know, I'll have a cup of coffee. But for the most part, I just have my two little cups of coffee in the morning and I really enjoy them. And so one day it was like my husband and I, maybe my mom, maybe I saw what my, my mom's setup was or mentioned it. And we just got to chit chatting and my husband and I were like, oh my gosh, let's just get two coffee pots. And so that's why we have two coffee pots. One makes decaf, the other makes caffeinated. But getting back to about the, the ground coffee, I keep the two bags, and that way if I don't get around to grinding the beans, I have those to rely on. Sometimes maybe I'm just real tired, and then I go to make the coffee and I realize I'm very low, I can open those. And I, I keep an eye on the expiration date of those. You know, normally I'm not too worried about Best Buy dates. We've talked a lot about that and how the U.S. Department of Agriculture says, you know, these, most things really don't go bad. They just may lose their nutritional uh, benefit over time, but it's usually over a long time. Uh, so that's good to know. Uh, but with coffee, I think ground coffee just... I kind of equate it on the same level of maybe uh, ground whole grain flour, like whole wheat flour. 
I think that there comes a point because there's so much oils in coffee that uh, it's not going to give you the same nice flavor as when it's fresh. So I do pay attention to uh, the Best Buy dates or the expiration. I'm not quite sure how they label coffee. And I will use those and give myself a little break from having to grind the beans and then just uh, re refill that when I go to the grocery store. Now the rest of the bins are just filled with things that make quick and easy side dishes. Uh, that's the, I've got some bulgur down there, I've got some Italian farro, and they are all great whole grain options as opposed to making rice. And they cook up in five minutes. They're absolutely wonderful. They're sold by HEB under their central market line. And I, I really like having those on hand. And then in the bin uh, next to the coffee, I've got some barley, uh, I've got some lentils, you know, just different things that can make quick and easy side dishes or soups. And then down on the bottom, I've got some of those dehydrated soup packages, as well as um, some rice noodles, which really make a nice soup too, and also some seaweed. Uh, I like, I've got down there, I, I keep kombu, kombu, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, K-O-M-B-U, and that is wonderful to use when you're cooking beans. It really helps uh, with the digestibility of beans. So I always like to throw a piece of that kombu seaweed in whenever I'm cooking beans. And it's if you think, oh, I don't like seaweed, because I've never like been a huge fan of seaweed. Ted and Ben love like those, what are they, California wrap things, you know, that are wrapped with the seaweed, the sushi wraps. But no, I just, I don't know, I just never developed a taste for it. But with the combo, I, I don't not notice it at all. And also in making like a homemade seasoning, um, I've made them with kelp in the past, but I find that I really like, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, dulse, D-U-L-S-E. I like that better. Um, and they're both seaweeds. And I highly recommend that if you ever want to make one of those really high-powered, nutrient-dense seasonings where you're putting in maybe some uh, nutritional yeast and some seaweed powder, buy very, very small amounts and taste them. And if you're not like a huge seaweed fan, you may find you like dulse as opposed to maybe not liking kelp. Uh, dulse is kind of, almost the, for me at least, kind of, a, kind of a sweet, it's a reddish color. And it's got a little bit of a, almost like a more, a little bit of a Swedish, sweet flavor to it. And uh, I, I find it quite pleasant and it's great nutritionally. So that's that for the very lower shelf. And we'll just move up one shelf. What I've got here are some of the things that I would use for baking. Now, you might be saying, oh, where's your flour? And again, you know, I keep that. I keep my flour and my whole grains together and I keep them in five gallon buckets. And I don't mind going in, I have to walk into the laundry room to get them and I don't mind that at all. And I just will bring a bowl, you know, I've got a scoop if I'm using the flour and I'll just bring a bowl and just scoop, you know, whatever I think I'm gonna need. Um, probably eventually maybe I'll put some kind of container in here with, uh, you know, maybe one bag of all-purpose all purpose or um, bread flour in there to make it a little more convenient on feeding my uh, starter. But again, the decision fatigue was setting in and I wasn't really sure and I've never really kept my flour in here. So I kind of got to think about that. But what I've got over here in the corner are just kind of all the baking things. I've got my homemade vinegar and I also way in the back there, but you can't see it's kind of in the black hole, is where I keep the larger homemade vinegar that's brewing uh, and I have a video where I show you how to make that it's just the vanilla beans and they're just brewing uh, in some vodka and I just keep them way uh, in the back there kind of in the dark part of my pantry and but next to that I do have a jar of store-bought vanilla and that I have like had that for forever and so I just keep them together in the event, I don't know, if something happened to my homemade vin uh, vanilla, I'd have that handy. And then next to that, I keep uh, that vanilla paste. I love that. 
If you're making homemade uh, vanilla ice cream, that has all like the little seeds in it and it's just, oh, it's scrumptious, scr scrumptious. <laughs> and then next to that, I have a little bear that's just, it's like a, a cinnamon shaker. And then behind it, I've just got, you know, my baking soda, my baking powder, my cornstarch, my arrowroot flour for thickening. I've got some tapioca flour back there. Uh, for making, uh, you know, the I, I like to use tapioca flour to thicken um, pies. Uh, I find that it just really works well. I like it a lot better than flour or cornstarch. Uh, and it's really relatively easy to find. I got that at my local grocery store. Um, and if they only have like the tapioca balls or sometimes they, they have the smaller ones called the tapioca pearls. You know, I, I forget exactly how they describe all of them. But if you want to turn them into flour, it's easy, you know, if you have one of those little spice grinders. But I really like using tapioca flour. Uh, and what else do I have back there? Oh, I have the little honey bear. But that's just something that I save because it's very precious to me. Because, you know, as I've shared with you, if you've seen my video with my son Ben where he talks about having dyslexia, and that little bear used to be filled with local honey, L-O-C-A-L, -L, and it says local. And he was looking at it one day and he said to me, Mom, that's unusual. Why would honey be locale, as in low calorie? Yeah. And I said, oh, it, it says local. But we were both like so happy because even though he read locale as meaning low calorie, it was pretty close to local. So uh, that that's why I have that little bear tucked back there. And the only other thing I have in there is some espresso coffee. And I use that if I'm baking chocolate things. So that's very handy. And then next to it, I have um, a glass jar filled with maple sugar. And then I, I don't have a lot of that and I don't use a lot of it. It's expensive. So I really save it for those things. I think I've shared with you where I showed you how I like to make kind of mixes. And if I'm making a uh, cake mix, a homemade cake mix for yellow cake, I like to use the maple sugar because it doesn't darken anything the way the Rapadura or the uh, Sucanat, I believe in the United States we call it Sucanat. I think some of you have shared with me in Europe, it's referred to as Rapadura. It's basically just the dried sugar cane juice, but it tends to darken things the way brown sugar would because it still has the molasses intact. And the maple sugar doesn't really give a maple flavor, but it, it provides a lighter color. So I use that very sparingly and I, it's, to me it's a forever food, you know, it's, it's in the sugar family. Uh, and I've got like my little, it's a little sugar cube uh, holder and that was my mom's. And then I've got another little thing holding little packets of sugar and, and some sugar cubes in a, in a tube. Uh, again, you know, I do these like little decorating things that makes me happy when I open the pantry and I see these cute little things. Uh, but I know that some of you have asked me about those glass jars because uh, in some of my, I think in some of my older videos, maybe on my counter, I had some larger ones and I think I might have had some flour back then on my counter. I can't remember exactly. And then these are kind of smaller ones. All of these I've just purchased over the years at Walmart. And I don't know, I used to pay, or I have a few more of these uh, in my laundry room, but I used to pay like $4.99 for them. I think they're like $7.99 now. Uh, but they're just made by An Anchor Hawking and uh, you can definitely, they're usually, if you have a Walmart and you go into the area where they sell, you know, all the glass and plastic containers, they're usually on the very bottom shelf. And, you yeah, know, I think they're pretty reasonable and it's glass. You know, there's no, those don't have any, if you need something that has a silicone tight seal, they don't have that. Uh, but I've not had any problem storing my two sugars in them, my maple sugar and my sucanat. And then next to that, I was well, speaking of flour, I just have another little jar. And those jars are so old. These are jars that belong to my mom. 
and they do have a silicone seal, which is nice, though. Uh, but, yeah, between my mom and me, you know, we both had different sizes, and I, I just feel like they've been in our family, like, forever. Uh, but uh, I keep my Wondra flower uh, in one, and then behind that is just some plain uh, organic white sugar. And then tucked in, like I said, it kind of go back. It kind of goes back into the black hole area where I have the, the vanilla steeping and some other like little fancy sugars like demerara, you know, those little crunchy sugars and things, and some powdered sugar things that it's so rare that I use those, so I can kind of push those back there. But I know they're there if I need them. But that wonderful flower I like to have right in the front because that is so handy. Uh, when making a homemade gravy. It's just ground very fine and so it just dissolves really easily and I love to make a homemade gra gravy. I just get some butter, a little Wondra flour, and then a couple of cups of bone broth. It's a wonderful way to get bone broth into your family. So that is like the perfect place for it because I can just kind of grab it. Um, so that's kind of a, a working pantry item uh, when I'm making uh, gravies. I wanted to show you these three lower shelves uh, on my door. And what I've got here is this is just a little tin. I just keep some ginger in here. I just refill it. It's just I've got it in a plastic bag. Again, you know, just having some crystallized ginger is wonderful. Uh, especially if you have a little upset stomach or something. And sometimes my son just really enjoys it as a snack. And I feel good about it because uh, Dr. Andrew uh, is at Weil. Uh, you know, I've always talked about him and, and he uh, is so interesting because he really is sort of, they say, the father of integrative medicine. And he often talks about having enjoying a little crystallized ginger with some nuts because ginger, even though it's got a little sugar on it, it offers a lot of nutrition. So that, I always like to have some of that on hand. I actually have in here, I put it in a plastic bag, but I actually have in here uh, old fashioned oats. <laughs> so I've got that, uh, the one that I showed you up at the very top of my pantry, which is sort of like the extended pantry version, but I've got some uh, in there. And then this jar is actually empty, but I saved it. I had had some, um, the pinhead oatmeal, similar, you know, to the steel, steel, uh, steel cut, <laughs> steel cut oats. But I love this that it had, it's empty now, but it has this plastic lid. So it's just real easy. Um, I'll put something in there to open and close it as opposed to the other one that you kind of have to use a little something. And then this, I love um, that there's, there's not cookies in here, but I love this, uh, uh, La Mer Poulard, Mother Hen in French. I, I believe it's what it means, Mother Hen. I love it. And I got these cookies a long time ago at Tuesday morning. Um, but I saved the t I love tins. And I saved the tin. And I used the tin to hold a lot of other little tins. <laughs> and I, 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 these are great if you want to take some tea bags with you uh, in your pocketbook. And you can just put them in these little tins. So I just, I really like saving them. I, I'm just so addicted to tins. I have tins all over the place. <laughs> but they're, yeah, how can you throw them out, you know? <laughs> and so I keep that in there handy. So if I need any tins, I've got them. And then this uh, is, act, these are actually uh, dried sour cherries. And I love these. And, but I buy them in bulk. Uh, so I do put those in a jar. And then I've got chopped dates, uh, which I use in, in baking. I've got um, some currants I also use in baking. Then back here, I've got uh, the medjool dates. We just sometimes will enjoy these after dinner. It's a nice little bit of sweet treat if you're feeling uh, that you want a little something sweet, but at least something that's good for you. And then some raisins. And then I've got prunes and I've got uh, some figs here. These are wonderful. Uh, these larger bags, this one I believe I bought at Costco. Uh, they have a lovely selection of dried fruits uh, if you get a chance to shop there. 
Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this tour. And if you'd like to learn more about stocking your pantry, your whole Four Corners pantry, including your working pantry and your prepper pantry, be sure to click on this video over here where I have a full playlist that covers all of this. And don't forget, I'll also be covering the rest of my pantry, the rest of my Four Corners pantry, including my fridge and my freezer and my extended pantry. Uh, so if you look forward to that, be sure to subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing you then and seeing you over here in my Texas Hill Country Kitchen. Love and God bless.